Krishna wants to rasa rasarambi, initiate to begin this Leela Shiramani, the crest jewel of all pastimes. In regard to this pastime, Srila Nartam Das Thakura said, Tara Bhakta Sangi Sada Rasa Leela Prema Kata Jai Kaure Se Pai Ganasha Jai Kaure Se Pai Ganasha Iha Tevi Mukha Jai Shunatam Das Thakur is saying, Tara Bhakta Sangha Sada Rasa Lila, Lila Prema Kata. Those persons who always associate with Tara Bhakta, that means those who are one pointed in their dedication to Srimati Radhika. So those who always associate with those who are Ananya Sri Radha Padakamala Dasya Karasadhi. Srila Prabhupada and the Sazan Thakur said, the maid servants of Radhika are so one pointed to her. Hare Range Sangam Sapana Samaye Na That they don't want to enjoy pastimes directly with Krishna even in their dreams. Balak Krishna Kurpa Sakadhi Kimapya Charitika Pyutasredu Mameiti Mamapa Chahasati. If Krishna will come and catch them by the choli, by the cloth and pull them, then they'll say, no, no, stop, stop. Oh, Radha, Radhika, save me, save me. And run and hide behind Radhika. Mamatma Chahasati. And Radhika laughs, seeing their dedication to her lotus feet. So persons who are doing bhajan in this mood, Tara Bhakta Sange Sada, one should always associate with them. And Rasa Lila Premakata. And be absorbed in hearing, chanting and remembering this Kata, Rasa Panchadhyay, five chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam. Mahaprabhu himself, in the evening time, when it was a full moon, he used to wander in the gardens, on the bank, on the, on the shore of the ocean in Jagannath Puri, and tell Sora Kamada Goswami, what shloka part? And Sora Kamada Goswami, in a sweet voice, he used to sing. Bhagavan Pitaratri, Sharat for the Malika, and he memorized entire Ras Panchajai, all five chapters. 48 verses in the first chapter, 44 verses in the second chapter, 19 verses in the third chapter, 22 verses in the fourth chapter, and 39 verses in the fifth chapter, 172 verses, Sarak Dhammada had by heart. And he would sing them one after another in the raga with beautiful raga and tal and Mahaprabhu would. Payora Sisti Reis Pura Pavanali Kalanaya Muhu Brindara Nyasparana Janita Prema Vibhasha Kvachit Krishna Vrti Rasana Bhakti Prachala Bhakti Rasana Sachitanya Kimne Punara Pitisho Yasitam Rupa Goswami is crying. When will I again see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wandering in the gardens of the shore of the ocean, hearing the singing of Swarup Dhanada, seeing the flowers which are Udipana, inflaming his memory of Brajalila, and becoming overwhelmed with praying, and the holy name dancing on his tongue uncontrollably. So, Krishna himself, he came into the Apani Karibu Bhakta Bhava Angikari, Apani Achari Bhakti Shikabu Savai. Krishna said, I will appear in this world in the mood of a devotee and I will personally show everyone how to follow the path of devotional service by my own life, by my own example. So, Tara Bhakta Sangi Sada Raslila Prema Kata Seikare Yepai Yekare Sepai Ganesha 
If someone will do this, then they will or easily attain Ganesham, Chavasundar Shri Krishna. But Ihate Vimukha Ye Kabu Tara Tara Kabu Nahi Siddhi Nahi That person, if, if a person is Vimuk, that is indifferent, averse, against, hearing this Rasalila Katha, then that person will never become a Siddha. They can never, never, never attain perfection without hearing this powerful Bhagavad Gita or narration of Srimad Bhagavatam. And not only that, but Srimad Bhagavatam Das Thakur said, Nahiyeno Shuni Tarana. What to speak of? See the face of that person. I don't even want to hear his name. So it's an expression that Das Thakur is expressing his Nishta. His Nishta in the lotus feet of Radhika. His Nishta in the association of her devotees. His Nishta in this sweet and beautiful Kata. As Srila Raghunath Das Kaswami Pada has written, Anuradha Radha Pada Bodha Renu Anasucha Brindat Vita Pada Nkam Asambhasya Tadbhava Gambira Chita Kutaha Chama Sindora Sasya Vagaha And less than until Anuradha Radha Pada Bodha Renu A person dedicates his life to with the greatest honor Worshipping the dust of the feet of Radhika. Unless and until one takes shelter of Brindavan Dham, Dham Bhas. And that which is that place which is Ankit marked with the beautiful lotus footprints of Radhika. And unless and until Asambhasita Bhagavan Bhira Chita, one engages in the Sambhar discussion. Discussing this Lila Katha, Gavir Chitta, with Radhika's devotees, whose Chitta, whose hearts are extremely deep and absorbed in her loving service. Unless these three conditions are fulfilled, Kuta, Shamasindura, Syagagaha, how will one find the ocean of rasa, of love for Krishna? One will not find it. One will not even know, even in which direction to make this first step to that ocean of Shamarasa. So Bhagavan Pitharatri, Sharuk Pula Malika, Vikshara Manaschakre, Yoga Maya Mupasrita. So yesterday we discussed how when that desire came in the heart of Krishna, then Yoga Maya Upasrita. Asrit means he took shelter. And Upa, here the prefix Upa indicates in the most total and complete way. Fully with his whole heart, Krishna took shelter of Yoga Maya. So Yoga Maya has three main meanings. The first is, it is the Sabriti, the essential function of Vishuddha Sattva, Samvit and Nadini. That Samvit, the consciousness potency of Sri Krishna, and Ladini, the pleasure potency, are abstract. And when they get support from Sandini, the existence potency, then that Yoga Maya manifests a concrete form, and her name is Purnamasi. So Purnamasi Devi is the total Yoga Maya Devi. But because she has the form of an elderly Tapasvini, an elderly lady who is doing austerities, very learned in all the Vedas, white hair like snow, dressed in saffron cloth. So in her presence, Radha Krishna very respectful. So she cannot come close where that sweet Madhurya Lila is taking place. And so, Purnamasi Devi has a Prakash, an expansion, who is in charge of the department of Madhurasa. So the form of Yoga Maya, who is in charge of the department of Madhurasa, the romantic mood, is Oh, she's gone outside. Yes. Brenda Devi. <laughs> Where is Brenda Devi? Make sure. She's, um, she's taking the sun bath hand. Yeah. But she should kind of be on the right side. Okay. okay. Right now. Good, yeah. 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 Whenever this guitar, there should be Brenda Devi on the right side. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why? No. When Brenda Devi is, becomes 
inspired and is relishing the sweetness of the Harikata, then she begins to emit a divine fragrance that only the devotees who went to Mangalati and chanted all their rounds can smell. <laughs> Not everyone can smell it. So then this adds an extra atmosphere and nectar to Harikata because the Yoga Maya, the Prakash of Yoga Maya, who is in charge of the department of Madhurasa, is present. And when she is satisfied, then she cannot, in this particular form, physically say, Sadhu, Sadhu, but she can emit a divine aroma from her. <laughs> Oh, now we see Vrinda Devi, she's screaming. Yoga Maya, Pastor, literally, literally Yoga Maya was there, Pastor. Just to illustrate the meaning of the words. <laughs> so one meaning of Yoga Maya is the Leela Shakti of, of Praja. Then the next meaning, Yoga Maya, Pastor, is Shimati Radhika is Yoga Maya. Krishna in his heart took complete shelter of Shrimati Radhika. Why? Because yoga means meeting. And the maya comes from man datu. So man, mane shabde cha. The word, the datu, the verb root man means mane shabde cha. So mane means pariman, the full extent. So yoga maya is that person with whom Krishna enjoys yoga meeting man to the full extent. So yoga maya upasita. Then, the third meaning, we didn't, now we're continuing from yesterday. We touched these things yesterday, now we're continuing. The third meaning that we didn't say is here, yoga maya means see Krishna's bunks. His fruit. Because man datu, man, mane, shabde cha. The word man, the datu man, also means shabda, sound. Therefore, yoga means meeting. So, the sound that brings about the meeting of Radha Krishna is called yoga maya, and therefore it refers to Bhansi, Krishna's fruit. In other words, in order to, to perform this Leela, Krishna will have to, at the moment, as we're describing, Krishna's fruit is actually in his, tucked in his belt. Tucked in his belt. But he'll have to take it out and begin to play. It will come in the next third verse. So, Krishna took complete shelter of Bhamsi, who is Yoga Maya, the sound that brings about the meeting of Krishna with Radhika and Braj Gopis. Now, See, Krishna's uh, Bhansi, he has, actually has three types of flute. Venu, Murali, and Bhansi. So Venu is made of bamboo. So in chapter 21 of Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna is playing the Venu. But here he is playing Bhansi. And Bhansi also has three types. Sambohini, Akarshini, and Anandini. So, for this particular Leela, see Krishna is employing his Akarshini Bhaksi. Hmm? Akarshini. And there's a reason for that. Now, the Akarshini Bhaksi is not to bamboo. This flute is made of gold. Hmm? And the difference is, for example, Sambohini. Sam means completely or all, together. Mohini. That Bhaksi bewilders everyone. Just like also in Venu Geet, when he plays his flute. Iti Venu Ravam Raja Sarva Bhuta Mano Haram Shrutva Bhajastriya Sava Vanayantyo Abhirei Durei Very famous verse of Venu Geet. He said that when Krishna played his Venu, what happened? Sarva Bhuta Mano Haram It enchanted and attracted all living entities. Now Krishna doesn't want Krishna doesn't want the cows running to the Rasa Leela and Jajila <laughs> and, and Madhu Mangal and He doesn't want everyone to come to the Rasa Leela. So he cannot use Samohini. 
He wants to use Akashini, and the speciality of the golden Akashini flute is that Akashini is very choosy. Very choosy. It can pinpoint exactly the target that Krishna is holding in his heart. Not only that, but it can make one person hear one thing and one person hear another as well. So it's very, it's a very tactical weapon. <laughs> so Yoga Maya Upasrita means Krishna took shelter of his Lila Shakti, the power to make the impossible possible. Krishna took shelter of Shimati Radhika, the embodiment of the highest love. And Sri Krishna took shelter of his Akashini Bhansi. So, at the moment, it's still touching his belt. Krishna is just, in this verse, getting ready for the Rasa Lila. So, first of all, Krishna is dressing himself in beautiful garments and beautiful sringar. He's a dear Lalit Nayak. That means, Vaitakta Navatarunya Parihasa Visharada. Nishchinta Dhira Lalita Sapraya Prayashi Bashaha. There are different kinds of hero, you know, just like Yudhisthira. He is the mm, uh, Dear Shanta, that means very peaceful hero. Lord Ramachandra is Dear Odata, very courageous and generous hero. Beam saying is Dear Odat, very. Mm, how can you say, impetuous and vengeful. If someone does something to him, he wants to get them back ten times over. <laughs> but, Krishna is now in the mood, dear Lalit. Dear Lalit is like Cupid himself. So his first quality is Vidagda. That is expert in all the arts. He's, so he's very expert in decorating himself. Vidagda Navatarunya. He's always fresh and young. Parihasa, expert at joking. And Nishchintya. Nishchintya means he doesn't have a care in the world. So here in the verse, Bhagavan Api, the word Api, we explained seven meanings before. Now eighth meaning is coming. Api means that Krishna is Delali Nayak. He is the hero who wants to engage in loving affairs. And he is Prayasi Vasha under the control of his sweethearts. Why does Api indicate Delali Nayak? Because Bhagavan Api, although he's Bhagavan, his Nishchintya doesn't have a care in the world. He can't be bothered to do Shrishti Palana Samha, the creation, maintenance and destruction of the universe. He can't be bothered about giving mercy to the devotees and killing the demons, Purtranaya, Sadhana, Vinasya, His Nishchintya doesn't care about anything. Nishchintya, not a care. So Bhagavan Api, although he's Bhagavan Api, uh, no, he's Bhagavan Api, Delalit. Completely carefree, never has a care in the world. He even doesn't have to go out and take the cows to graze every day. He's a prince, he's the son of the king of Braj. Nanda Maharaj tells him, oh, if you want to stay home, just stay home. I have many servants, they can take the cows out. The only reason Krishna goes out to take the cows is because he can't meet with Radharani in the village because everyone's watching. So his cows are basically his ticket to get out into the forest and sneak often meet with Radharani. So in Vedic culture, everyone does go puja. They worship the cows. They offer arti to the cows and bow down. Krishna's offering arti to the cows. Thank you, cows. <laughs> you are my ticket to see Radhika. My pronouns to you again, dear. Can it be paid? So, Krishna is chit. He doesn't have a care in the world. And he never did a day's work in his life. So, Bhagavan Api is a deal I would play. So now, that Dilalit Nayak. Kalita Lalita Bandamala Jaya Jaya Devari. Jaya Goswami describes the Dilalit how he's such a dandy. <laughs> such fuckery. Taking so many beautiful ornaments and flower garlands. Because it's a full moon night, see Krishna is taking white lower cloth. He's taking a very fine, transparent, white shirt, so his beauty is showing through his shirt. He's wearing 
a white katipatka. That is a girdle around his waist, and that's where the box is right now. Tucked in the girdle around his waist. And on that girdle, there are, there are many ornaments hanging down, woven together in a net with many jewels. Krishna's even put altar, red altar on his feet. And we know Radharani has altar on, on the feet. So generally men, men don't put the altar on their feet. But why is Krishna putting the red altar on his feet? Because there is a day when a man wears altar on his feet. His wedding day. So, <laughs> Krishna's wearing many diamonds because the diamonds are also white. On his neck he's wearing what's called Kanta Sri. It's a choker around the neck and it's made of rows of pearls and there's a like a, a locket or a medallion in the middle. He's wearing his Kostuba money, red, just one red jewel on his chest. He's wearing armbed, armbands, wristbands, br bracelets, and he has many bracelets. <laughs> and on the, on the first bracelet, it, it has the mouth of the, the face of a lion. And the last, and then there are many bracelets in between, and the last one has the face of an elephant. Krishna's putting on Makarakunda, beautiful earrings, like the mystical creature, the Makara. Why? Because Cupid, just as Arjun has Hanuman on his flag, and Krishna has Guruda on his flag, and Balaram has a palm tree on his flag, but Cupid has Makara on his flag. So Krishna wears Makara Kunda. So he's decorated with Makarakunda and the Vaijanti Mala. Banamala goes down to the feet. Vaijanti Mala has five color flowers, goes down to the waist. See, Krishna has an elephant pearl suspended from his septum in the middle, so it's coming on his top lip. <laughs> Krishna put kajal on his eyes. Hmm? These eyes are very pointed, like, like an arrow. But if an arrow is more effective, if it has some poison on it. So his kajal on his eyes, like putting the poison on the tip of the arrow. And his glance becomes more powerful. So, then, he's putting on a very beautiful tilak, and then he puts on his turban. So he has a white turban, and then on the turban he's putting a mukut, a crown on top of the turban, and with a peacock feather, leaning to the left side, so that when Radhika is walking next to him, then his peacock feather is like a parasol, serving Shimati Radhika. And Radhika wears a chandrika leading to the right yeah, to make shade on the face of Sri Krishna. And then, on, so he has Mukut here leaning left with the peacock feather. Then he has another ornament sticking out to the right side. That's called Katra. And it's like a, a curved ornament coming from the right side. Then, earlier that day, Radhika had sent him some flowers. And he took two of the flowers, which were sent by Radhika, and put them over his ears. He put his Akashini Venu in his waist belt and now he's fully the Dhiralali and ready to go to the Rasalu. So Sri Krishna, he set out and he went from Nandagam and he followed the Gullis. Gullis are little lanes beneath the trees in between the Kunjas of the forest of Vrindavan. So he went through Kunja Gali he went through Keshi Gali and he's on his way to Bhangsi And there he stood and he crossed his 
feet as Krishna stands in his Tribhanga form. And he took his Bhamsi from his belt and then he looked at the beauty of Vrindavan which had been decorated by Vrindadevi. And exactly as Sri Krishna now the flute is in his hand, he's looking at the beauty of Vrindavan and exactly at that moment Tado Duraja Kukubakara Mukam Prachavilin Pannarudena Santame Satchashani Namura Gatschukam Rajan Priya Priya Eva Dir Gadarshanaha Tada means at that time Tada exactly at that time the moon came out So that means as we were discussing before that we do our activities according to time. When it snows, we go skiing. When the sun comes out, people go to the beach. So people act according to time. But in Braja, time acts according to the Lila. So because Krishna was now ready to perform the Rasa Lila, exactly at that time, the Udipana, the beautiful moon, appeared, rose up in the sky. So when Krishna saw if you see the rising full moon, especially in Vrindavan, in the full moon night of the month of Ashin, in the Sarat season, when it rises, the moon is reddish. And when Sri Krishna looked at the reddish moon, Arunayana Shantamai, with its very cooling, uh, pinkish rays, then he remembered the face of Shivati Radhika. And just seeing that, you see, when the heart is very soft and there's Uddipana, some stimulation, then at once many waves come. And when Sri Krishna saw the reddish moon rising, it touched his heart and he began, he was lost. He was reminiscing about the beauty of Radhika's face when it's covered with the gulab in the, you know, in the holy river. And Krishna began to sing. And he was remembering that one day Madhumanga Krishna is now in his meditation. He was remembering. One day Madhumanga was walking in the village of Braja. And an elderly gopi came to him and said, O oh, Bhatu, O oh, great Brahmin, O oh, Bhusura, the Brahmins of Bhusura, the gods of the earth, we are very, very much perturbed. We are really, really disturbed. Because our putra badu, that means our daughters in law, our daughters in law, they're behaving in a very strange way and we can't understand why. When my daughter in law sees a peacock feather, she starts to tremble. When she hears the sound of a flute, she runs out of the house. When she sees Gunja berries, then tears flow from her eyes and she, be she becomes stunned. We don't know why. My Putra Vatu, usually newly married brides, when they move to the mother-in-law's house, they're on their best behavior and they do all the housework and the cooking and the cleaning to the, uh, with the utmost care and attention. But she doesn't seem interested in all of these things. So then Maru Mano said, I will not answer this question in the street. Have some respect. If you want to ask me a question and you want to hear the answer, invite me to your home. So, oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Please come to my home. So then that elderly gopi brought Madhu Mangal to her home and received him properly. She took a very ornate asana. Idam masana. And invited Madam Abu, please take us. So then she came with a, a arty tray with all the puja paraphernalia and ringing a bell, she worshipped the brahmas. <laughs> and then, after worshipping him, then she offered him some prasad. <laughs> so then Madam Manga, he ate so much food till his belly was full and so many sweets. And then, 
after he was completely satisfied in all ways, then she posed the question. This is actually the method. First one has to uh, satisfy the learned person, and then pose the question, and then answer will come. Not only will the answer flow, but one's heart will be receptive to understand the answer also. So then, very humbly she said, please tell me, why is my daughter-in-law not interested in her housework? Madam Mango said, give me a mango. <laughs> so then she got a fresh ripe mango and put it in the hand of Madam Mango. Madam Mango took it and sniffed it, just to check that it was a really good one. <laughs> so he, and he's acting like a chari, he's doing the Gyan Mudra. Then he said, this is a very dangerous and critical situation. Before I answer your question, you answer my question. Tell me, did your putra vadhu, your daughter-in-law, go out at the time of dusk? That is the sandhya, not the day or the night, but dusk. Then, that old woman and other elderly women who were there whose daughters were in the same situation. They all said, yes, yes, our daughters have been out during the Sunday, during the time of dusk. Madhu Mango says, ah, that's the point. He said, what do you mean? He said, a bad shadow has touched them. Mm -hmm. A bad shadow means pisach. A pisach is a type of hobgoblin, demon, supernatural ghostly creature. Then the old woman said, but what kind of pisach is this? Madhu Mango said, this pisach is very powerful, takes control of a person's life and never leaves them. It's called calm pisach. <laughs> <laughs> and there's only one way to get free from being possessed by the calm pisach. Hmm? They said, what is that? Anything will do anything. He said, your putra vadhu, your daughters-in-laws, they have to do a vrat. And if they do this vrat successfully, only then will the calm pisach leave them. So now I'll tell you the rules of the vrat. Rule number one. They should not see the face of their husband. <laughs> Rule number two. They should decorate themselves with beautiful garments and ornaments and take an artichoke tray, the puja thali, and uh, gulab, red powdered colors. They should put, wrap them in cloth and tuck them in their belts. So. Arty tray in one hand, colors in the belt, and pitchkari. Pitchkari is a big syringe, like a super soaker, for spraying colored water. And so dressed like this, arty tray, colors in the belt, and pitchkari on the shoulder. Then, at the twilight, exactly at the twilight time, they should set out from the home and go to the bank of the Jibuna. And there, they should do a vigil, all night vigil. Remain awake for the whole night. And in a kunja bhavan, in a cottage on the shore of the river, they should do a puja of Kal Kumar. The David, the Kal Kumar. <laughs> so Kal means time, and Kurma means young. So in a joking way, he was referring to Sri Krishna. That means Krishna, who is... Mm, Navayovaramcha, forever, forever young, forever fresh. So then, after Madhu Mangal had instructed them in this way, they gave pranam and some pranami and they were very happy. And they told the other ladies who were in this position, and they all went and instructed their putra vadu, their da daughters and husbands. So that evening when the dusk came, see Krishna, along with Madhu Mangal and many friends, they're quite young at this time. They came uh, onto the bank of Jamuna in the forest of Purindavan 
And at the same time, all the Putra Vadus came, all the young gopis of Braja, with their pichkaris and their colors and everything. So from one side, the gopis were coming, and from the other side, Krishna and his friends were coming. Lalita said to Radhika, Lalita, Radhika, look very stern. So Radhika was frowning her eyebrows. Lalita has taught her how to frown in 100 different ways. And Radhika practices it, practices it in front of a mirror. <laughs> so then, as they approached, then Radhika saw Krishna and seeing the charming beauty of Krishna, then she completely forgot about the her face. Man. And Lalita said, Radhika, pull yourself together, compose yourself. Don't become bewildered by him. Don't come under his spell. Then Radharani very lovingly glanced at Krishna. And then when Krishna was shot by the arrow of Radhika's glance, Krishna began to tremble. Madhu Mango said, Krishna, pull yourself together. Don't be afraid. It's just a group of girls. What can they do? Because they're all dressed for war. They've got their weapons and their hand grenades. They've got everything. So it looks like a war. Madhu Mango thinks that he's afraid of the battle that may ensue now, the holy battle. But Krishna is trembling for other reasons. So then, Madhu Mango saw that Krishna was still trembling, as if in fear. <laughs> Madhu Mango jumped up. He said, Krishna, have faith in me. And he began prancing around. I am a Brahmin. I have done Tapasya. I know the Vedas. I know the Tantra. And he was jumping around. And as he was jumping, his Brahmin thread fell, his Upavit fell off his shoulder around his waist and then as he was gesticulating more and more it fell down to his feet and as he was jumping he kicked and his brown thread went up a tree and was hanging from a branch. <laughs> he came to Krishna, he said, Krishna look in my eyes. I know the Gayatri Mantra. I can protect you by the power of Gayatri Mantra. And then he went to take his brown thread to put because when you do when you remember Gayatri Mantra then you have to take your thread so he went to take his thread and there was nothing there so then he was he where's my thread and Krishna began to laugh and the friends began to laugh and say what kind of Brahmin are you you don't even have a book of it huh? so then Krishna and all of the friends of Krishna were laughing at Madhu Manga. Where's my Upavit? And he could not tolerate that they were all laughing at him. <laughs> so then Madhu Manga said, Krishna, you're making fun of me. And all of you, you're making fun of me. Uh, you'll regret it. That's it, I'm not staying with you anymore. I'm going to defect to the other side. I'm going to join the Shivir. Shivir is the camp. I'm going to the Shivir, the camp of Shimati Radhika. And then I'll take shelter of her, not you. Then Madhu Mango was marching away towards the army on the other side. Hmm? Krishna was calling out, don't go, don't go, don't go. Please don't go. But Madhu Mango quickly was running. But as Madhu Mango was running towards Radharani's yuta, Radharani's group, then they didn't know. They thought it may be a threat, you know, because in a, in a battle sometimes a warrior will just be so, such a berserker, they'll just go there first. So then the leader said to the Sakis, Chakravyu of formation. <laughs> Do you know the Chakravyu of formation? This is the most deadly arrangement, military arrangement in a battle that anyone can do. There's, it's like a circle with many, many layers. And there's an entrance, but the entrance doesn't let you in. It lets you into like a tunnel. And then the whole army, the whole Chakravu is spinning around. And so you have to fight through thousands and thousands and thousands of warriors. You just never, it will never get to the end of it. You'll never get to the middle, the target in the middle. Because if the king who's in the middle is injured, then the battle is over. Even though the rest of his soldiers are still alive. So the Chakravu, just so happens, there it is. So there's the chapter of your arrangement. 
So the leader said, Jack of Ruha, and all the gopis arranged themselves in their fanics and began spinning around. <laughs> so then, as Nanumanu was coming closer, she could see, actually he's not, he's not a threat at all. So Lalita Saki said, okay, let him in. And Madam Mangal entered into the chakra viewer and disappeared among the rotation of all the Sakis in Radharani's group. And then, Madam Mangal came right into the middle of the chakra viewer. And when he was in the middle and no one could see him, then all the gopis, they pulled out their colors and, and began to pelt him. Just from all sides, it was completely unfair, you know, like, I didn't know. It was worse than that. <laughs> so, they, they began to throw the colors at, at Madhu Mango. They took their pinch carries, they were spraying him, and they were saturating him from all sides. One of the Sakis took the dopata, the mm, chada from his shoulder, and she wound it up. She wound it very tightly and tied it and made a whip and she was whipping him. <laughs> and Gopi is also for holy, they have sticks. And the sticks are actually hard, but they're decorated with flowers. And some Gopis took their flower sticks and they were beating Madhu Mandal. So this is the, the, the origin of the um, uh, Lata Mali Hori. The, in Varsani, you see, you know, they do uh, holy with sticks. So as they were beating him, Krishna was calling out, Krishna, 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 Rakshama. Madhu Manga was calling, Rakshama, Rakshama. Oh, Krishna, save me, Krishna, save me. This Brahman is about to die. <laughs> Krishna from far away heard him. He thought, my friend is in trouble. But then Radharani came. And Madam Mangal called, Oh, Shimati Radhika, I am your guest. Is this the way to treat a guest? In Vedic culture, the, Aditi, the guest should be treated like God, very, very honorably. Oh, Radhika, you are so kind. I know that you are so kind. But if your friends are abusing me, this is not right, this is improper. So then Radharani came forward very gracefully like a queen and told her friends, don't beat him anymore. This is. So then all the Sakis became quiet and they retreated from beating, whipping, and spraying Madhumanga. Radharani very, very politely said to Madhumanga, Why have you left your friend, Sri Krishna? Why did you leave him? Krishna is full of sweetness. Hmm? So who, being with Krishna, could ever leave him? I think that's very improper. Then Madhu Mango said, no, 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 no. I have seen Krishna Kosti close up for many years. Krishna has many defects. You know how he stands Tribhanga in a crooked place, in a crooked way? So his heart is also very crooked. He is not kind at all. When he was only six days old, he killed a woman. Not only that, he killed a calf. Batsasur. He killed a bull. Avistasur. He's a thief. He steals butter from the houses. He stole the clothes of Braj, some Braj gopis when they were bathing in the river. So, he's a very bad character. But now I've seen your glories. I think that in your group you have so much sweet music. And you have very delicious food. <laughs> so, I have come to join your group. I want to live with you. I don't want to live with Krishna anymore. You see, when Madhu was with Krishna, they go out into the forest. Krishna said, look at the beauty of the forest. It's so nice. The birds in the trees are singing. It's as if the trees are like lovers whispering to each other. And the branches of the trees, they touch like lovers touching their fingertips. It's so beautiful here in Barama. I don't like it here in the forest. I like it better in your mother's kitchen. There's no good food out here in the forest. And every day we're in danger. Some demons are coming and disturbing us. So, Mother Mano said, that's it. I'm not, I don't want to be in Krishna's gang anymore. I want to join your group. 
So when Radharani heard all these criticisms of Krishna, she was very happy. Why? Because this is called Vajstuti, Vyajstuti. Uh, that means glorification on the pretext of criticism. Because that Krishna has killed Vatsasur and Putana and Aristasur, this is his virya, this is his heroism. So when the heroine hears about the strength of the hero, she is very pleased. Because in Vrindavan, the Viraras is always serving Madhurya Rasa. The chivalry, the heroism is always serving the romantic mood. So when Radharani heard Madhumangal's pretend criticism, she was so happy. So then, she was pleased with Madhumangal, so she offered him a seat and told the Sakis to bring food for him. So Madhumangal was eating the food again. He knows how to survive being a Brahmin. He was eating all the food. Then he said, um, Bring me some fresh butter. So the Radhika is very kind to Madhumanga. But the Sakis of Radha, Radharani, <coughs> they're very tough, very tough. With him. Why is Radharani very kind to him? <coughs> because Lalita has told her, If you want to bring, listen to my advice, if you want to bring Krishna under your control, then you have to do three things. One, when you see his friends, be really respectful to them. And when Krishna sees how you respect his friends, then he will think, this young girl is special. Mm -hmm. Then, the next thing is, if Krishna tells you any secret, never divulge that to anyone else. Then you, he knows that you're such a very high class. Because they are only low class people. If you tell them something in confidence, this is, can I tell you something? Yes, yes, yes. And then afterwards they go to someone and then they say, I'm not saying anything. And you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> but, and they start divulging your private things to someone else. This is very low class. So Lalita Saki is very experienced in the ways of the world. She told Radhika. She gives shiksha. Radhe, Srinu, Hitamiti, Shiksha. Oh, Radharani, listen to me. I'm telling you this. It's for your own good. If he tells you anything, you never divulge it to anyone else. And thirdly, don't press your desire onto his desire. What is his desire? Go along with that. So, if you do this, Krishna will completely come under your control. So, Radharani is being very nice to Madhumanga. But when Madhumanga said, bring me some fresh butter, then Chitra said, you want really fresh butter? Very fresh? I'll get you fresh butter. So then she took his cloth that was on his shoulder and she folded it and made, you know in India when they carry big pots on the head, they make a, a round thing from the cloth. So she made that padding from the cloth and put it on the head of Man Madhu Manga. Then Chitrasaki bought a big pot of butter and put the pot of butter on the head of Madhu Manga. And then she took a, a churning stick and put it in the butter and began churning the yogurt on the head of Madhu Manga. <laughs> After some, it takes time, you know. You really, if you, has anyone tried to churn butter to make yogurt? You churn yogurt to make butter? Have you done that? Right? It's hard. You sweat. You get really. My guru used to say, mainly all women today. They're quite fat because they buy the butter from the supermarket. <laughs> but the gopis are very strong and fit and healthy and very beautiful because the churning butter gives them good physique. So Chitrasaki was churning and the yogurt. And not another. Is it, this is taking a long time. Is, is, it, is the butter not ready yet? Then Chitrasaki said, Oh, the butter's ready just now. And she took the churning stick and <laughs> smashed the pot and he done snayam. Madhu Mangala Swaha. And Madhu Mangala was covered in butter. And then she hit him also with the churning stick. <laughs> so Chitrasaki said, here's the butter, I haven't told you one. So then Madhu Mangala was calling out from the middle of the chak chakra of Yuha. 
Krishna save me, Krishna save me. <laughs> so then Krishna said, we've got to do something, Subal, go and help him. So then Subal came running. <laughs> and Subal approached Radharani. She's, Subal said, hmm? Oh Simati Radhika, you are a great personality. And our Brahmin friend Madhubanga came to you as a messenger. And so, it's the rule, the first rule of diplomacy is, if someone sends an envoy, then you can never punish the messenger. The envoy should never be punished. This is the first rule of the international politics. That the ambassador of any country has to be respected. And because the way he's respected is respect shown to the country. So you're punishing him, this is quite improper. So then Vishaka Saki, she grabs Subal by the arm. And on one, in one hand, she grabs Subal, and in the other hand, she had some kajal. And she wiped the kajal on the eyes of Subal. And just as the gopis were laughing and seeing her put the kajal on the eyes of Subal, Madhu took his chance and ran for his life. <laughs> what are friends for? Right? Friends have to stick together when they're in trouble. So as soon as Subha was in trouble, Madhu Manga ran for his life. <laughs> so then Madhu Manga, he escaped, and he arrived, <sighs> breathlessly, uh, at, at, at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. After some time, Subha also escaped and came there to see Krishna. Then Madhu Manga was bragging about his heroism. Subha got caught by the gopis, and only by, by my bravery did he become free. You can see how he was captured by them, by the kajal on his eyes. Hmm? Subal said, oh Krishna, don't believe him. He's a cheetah. Hmm? If I had not gone there, he himself would be in a very critical condition. He didn't save me, I saved him. Hmm? So when Krishna heard how his friends had been abused, then Krishna became angry. And he decided, I must punish them. Yeah? Because if the envoy is, uh, is abused, then it means war. Right? Yes, yeah, war. So then, Krishna took his flute. And by his flute, just like before the battle of Kurukshetra, Krishna takes a conch shell. And blows the conch shell. To signify the beginning of the battle. Krishna played his flute to signify the beginning of the battle. And then, the phalanx of Krishna and the coward boys advanced from this side. And the phalanx of Radhika led by her great generals, Lalita and Vishaka. <laughs> they approached from the other side. <laughs> when Krishna played his flute to announce the battle, Radharani played her veena. You know, because when one side blows the conch, then the other side blows their conches. It's a, it's a conch blowing competition. So Radharani played her veena, and all the other sakis played their musical instruments. And the two sides approached each other, and Krishna came with a handful of, of gulal, and he through it, and the beautiful mm, reddish powder landed, and it was sparkling on the forehead, and on the cheeks, and on the chin of Shimati Radhika, and she smiled at Krishna, and when Krishna came through the Kunji Gali, the Keshi Gali, and saw the beauty of the forest of Vrindavan, and he took his flute, Tado Duraja Kapubi Karamukam, and the moon rose, and seeing that, Krishna got became lost in remembering this beautiful romantic pastime with Shimati Radhika because the rising moon reminded him of her face when he <coughs> his first throw of gulal on the face of Shimati Radhika. So Tadou Raja Kukubi Kara Mukam. Seeing that moon, Krishna was amazed. It was the Udipan that stimulated his heart and these pastimes He's so young, but he already has nostalgia for that first mm, holy battle. <laughs> so then, Krishna said, Oh, Chandrana, you are so fine. <clears throat> Prachavil Vilimpan means that the, the moon rose and the reddish rays of the moon decorated the, the eastern sky. So the eastern sky is the, considered to be a demigoddess, and she's the wife of Indra. Her name is Purvadisha. 
So there are four directions. The northern direction is called Uttar Disha, and she is the wife of Kuver. The western uh, direction is called Pashchima, and she is the wife of Varuna. The Dakshina, the southern direction, is the wife of Yamaraj, and the eastern direction is Purvadisha, and she is the wife of Indra. So, what's going on? The moon, Chandrama, is decorating the wife of Indra with red kumku. This is against all dharma. This is parakya. Hmm? So, Krishna thought, I am born in the moon dynasty, just like Lord Ramachandra is born in the sun dynasty, so Krishna is born in the moon dynasty. So, the moon is the head of my parampara. So, Mahajano yena gadasa pamta. The path of life is to follow your parampara. So when Krishna saw that the moon, his, uh, his guru of his parampara, was decorating someone else's wife with kumkum, then he thought, yes, this is the right time. And actually, Krishna was thinking, the moon is a quite old person. So old persons shouldn't do romantic pastimes. It's a bit of rasapas. There's rasapas in there. But I am Kishore, I am young. If I do it, then it will be more fun. So in this way, he was <laughs> inspired to begin the Rasalila. So then, oh, it's over time. I just have to stop right there. They told me I have to exactly stop on time because there's a drama. You see, so we'll continue tomorrow. We've got to the point. Krishna has taken the bansi out from the belt. It's making its way up to his lips now. And we're just talking about the thoughts that he's having in between the belt and the lips. That this class was about that. And tomorrow we'll come to the point of how, what Krishna does, because Krishna has a conversation with his flute, before he puts the flute to the lips. Because the flute is a dut, is a messenger. So if you read, there's a, there's a category of poetry called dut kavya. And dut kavya has special sections. And the first part of dut kavya is the glories of the dude and how the person who is sending the dude has to praise him and then open his heart and reveal the mission that he wants the dude to perform. So tomorrow we'll describe Krishna's conversation with the dude and then how Krishna filled the whole of his flute with the nectar of his lips and then how the flute set off on his secret mission. That will be tomorrow.